Virtual reality, also known as VR, is slowly but surely becoming a reality. Experts predict that within the next few years, our lives will change drastically due to the increased spread of VR equipments. 2016 is considered the first year of virtual reality. The startup company Oculus VR was in the limelight back in 2014 when Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg agreed to acquire it for two billion US dollars. At that time, Seo dong Yun, a Korean who is the co-founder of the company, received attention as well. However, he gave up a successful position and decided to take on a challenge of a new VR game startup. Think about VR as an enabler. You know, you have to think about what you can do with the, with the technology when you can disrupt time and space. Seo dong Yun is a VR opinion leader who tries to make virtual reality become a reality. So let's learn about his passion and efforts on this edition of the interview. Welcome to the interview. I'm your host, Park Sung Hee. When the movie Matrix was released in 1999, virtual reality was still in our imagination. The movie was re released this year, and those who saw the movie realized the imaginary world was slowly becoming reality. That is why today's interview with Seo Dong Il, the pioneer in the field of virtual reality, is all the more exciting. Hello, and nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you too. <laughs> well, in the opening, I mentioned the science fiction movie, The Matrix, mm -hmm. which was released 17 years ago. Mm. Do you remember seeing the movie and how you felt about virtual reality then? Yeah, definitely. Um, th that movie was one of my favorite movies all, of all time. And um, I remember watching it and growing up from it. And I love really, I love the idea that you can become a superhero mm -hmm. in the movie. And, um, that got me really excited that one day, you know, in the future, the virtual reality becomes real, you know, in reality, then I will have a chance to become a superhero. And did you know that you will become a pioneer in the field of virtual reality then? <laughs> no, 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 not, not at the time. I mean, um, I also thought that the virtual reality technology is still distant and it's not going to be available for a while. But I never imagined myself doing virtual reality back then. Well, two years ago, Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, acquired Oculus VR for $2 billion, and you were in a spotlight because you were one of the co-founders of the firm. And back then, many believed that virtual reality was still in the early days, and had that notion changed? Um, I believe so. Um, right now, many of the uh, hardware manufacturers are building uh, something called virtual reality HMD, which stands for head-mounted display. Right. And um, the consumer version of the HMD is now released in the market, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are having a chance to actually see what virtual reality experience is like. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the technology is not distant, it's actually coming to reality. How do people view VR compared to two years ago? Two years ago, um, when I decided to join Oculus as a co-founder in the year 2012, um, people told me that you shouldn't get into that industry because Everybody who joined that or who tried that industry has failed, oh. um, have never succeeded. Oh. And all the technology that it requires to make virtual reality is not ready. Oh, really? um, but coming from the gaming perspective, mm -hmm. um, I, I thought virtual reality you know, um, is only uh, one step away from mm -hmm. becoming reality. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I saw the virtual reality experience was the year 2012. It was a device called Oculus Rift. Right. Um, it was designed by a young man named um, Palmer Lucky, mm -hmm. um, and he designed this device from his parents' garage. All the all the exciting, you know, um, happens start, in start garage. Up. Right? Yes, 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 <laughs> garage. Um, and when I get to get get got a chance to see for the first time, um, although there's a lot of shortcomings and flaws in the hardware, um, the most 
um, exciting experience I had was that feeling of presence, mm -hmm. that I was actually um, teleported into a new world. Mm -hmm. And when I saw this experience, it was, I was blown away. And one of the um, reasons why I, I decided to join Oculus co-founders to make this device to um, real market and see how people react to it. Well, as a pioneer in the field of virtual reality, you are asked to do many speeches and lectures. What sure. are the themes of your lectures? Um, I think many people are wondering why virtual reality is important mm -hmm. and why virtual reality is now, mm -hmm. not back then. Um, and the reason I'm saying the virtual reality is, is very important right now is because of two reasons. One is the industrial perspective and the other one is a consumer perspective. Um, for industrial perspective, I would say the main driving force for virtual reality is something called diminishing return. Um, many people want to scratch their heads and say, what, what diminishing return? Um, it's a term that we use for economic um, studies. Mm -hmm. And that's when, when you invest a lot of um, money and resources to increase the quality of the end product mm -hmm. has no longer value for right. the consumers. Right. Um, when, I, when we look at the uh, um, consumer industry, um, especially the display industry, um, this display industry has been driven by the TV sets and mobile mm -hmm. devices. Um, so smaller display sales has been driven by the mobile mm -hmm. um, cell phones. But um, when's the last time you remember your um, display's resolution? Many people will say, um, you know, um, do we even care the resolution of the display? Right. Um, but I remember um, Galaxy S from Samsung, I'm talking about AMOLED display. Mm -hmm. um, there was a one Korean famous singer named Son Dan Bi, and she used to uh, sing an AMOLED song. Um, and since Galaxy S5, um, Samsung stopped talking about their display resolution. Um, many people who use Apple phones probably know about Retina display mm -hmm. one time. And I think I believe it was iPhone 4S mm -hmm. is the one that strongly advertised right. um, Retina display. But we don't actually talk about Retina display anymore, right? Um, so all the phone manufacturers are now using the same display technology that mm -hmm. was available about two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the biggest problem because um, the strongest sales um, area for mobile phone um, is no longer requiring the highest and greatest display. Right. They don't have any necessity right. to um, develop more. But those people who have tried, tried the virtual reality for the first time, right. they're going to say, oh yeah, the experience was great, but the resolution on it is somewhat you know, um, de desirable. Um, it needs to be improved better. Mm -hmm. um, all, we are actually using uh, the same type of display that we use for the mobile, right. and yet people think that the resolution is not good enough which gives the room for display companies to improve their technology. So if virtual reality HMD does take off to the consumer level, then it gives the reasons for um, display companies to expand their technology mm -hmm. and have another market to sell. Right. But that's not the only reasons why um, people should care about the virtual reality. There's also a consumer perspective, as mm -hmm. I said. Um, for the consumer perspective, um, this is the first time that allows people to control time and space. So a lot of the uh, traditional industries that we have to pay a lot of money for because we weren't able to control time and space will be influenced by virtual reality and, have to, and will have, have a destructive influence to those traditional industries like tourism mm -hmm. or sports right. or um, movie theaters and even concerts. We'll get back to that later. Sure. <laughs> Let me ask you a very basic question. Could you explain what virtual reality is in layman's term and also compare that with augmented reality? Sure. Um, right now we talk about virtual reality, augmented reality, or mixed reality, right. and there's many different terms um, to explain this virtually created world. So experts say virtual reality is one spectrum and augmented reality is the other spectrum. Mm -hmm. So virtual re the main difference between virtual reality and augmented reality is the control of time and space. When persons try the virtual reality for the first time, they need to feel, they need to feel like they're actually in somewhere else. They exist in somewhere, uh, some other time and some other place. Whereas augmented reality, you're still remaining in the same time zone and same mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. But the information that you see in front of you mm -hmm. is projected or extended in front of you. So um, augmented reality does not change the time of space concept, whereas mm -hmm. virtual reality does. I think that's what, that there are, those are the two major um, 
differentiating factors between augmented and virtual reality. Right. And so the virtual reality device has been around for several decades now. Sure. And why sudden renewed interest in virtual reality? And why now? Sure. I think because um, the technology that re requires to deliver a believable VR experience is ready now. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> for instance, computer graphics has been advancing so far that we can't no longer um, distinguish the, real gra the reality and the computer graphics. A lot of movies that we watch today, Avengers or um, X-Men or all of those Marvel or superhero movies, mm -hmm. you know that Iron Man is just pure computer graphics and yet we, it's very believable. Right. Um, so we are living in a time where we can see the virtual um, objects or virtual world as if they're real. Mm -hmm. um, and back then, the, the graphic power was not powerful not enough. Not that good enough. And some experts say that year 2016 is the dawn of virtual reality era. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that this particular year is special for the virtual reality? Um, the reason we called it as the dawn of the uh, VR era um, is because we have a consumer-friendly HMD that's available for this Finally, starting this year. This year. Yeah, something that you can buy mm -hmm. for a home use. 10 years ago or 20 years ago, when you buy HMD, you had to pay almost the uh, um, same price as a car. So who's going to buy HMD that's going to be as expensive as car? Sim uh, yeah, simple right. car. Um, so it wasn't affordable. Mm -hmm. But now um, we have a cheap enough HMD that mm -hmm. can be um, sold to consumer level. Mm -hmm. And also we are getting a lot of attention from content developers mm -hmm. um, that allows us to experience uh, many different virtual reality experiences. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's why it's called the dawn of the virtual reality era. And many say that Oculus Rift of 2013 was a revolution for virtual reality. And you were one of the founders of the company that made the Oculus Rift. And how did you get to participate in the startup? You know, uh, the way you put in a question sounds very fancy, but um, when I decided to join Oculus VR for the first time as right. a co-founder, um, I actually didn't have a huge dream. Um, I only believed in what I saw. Mm -hmm. We have a, a person named Brendan Irib. He is the CEO of Oculus of today. Um, he came to Korea to see me, and he brought me a small little box mm -hmm. that's the size of a cell phone. And then he told me that, Dylan, um, I need to show you uh, this device, and this is going to change the video game industry that we know today. Mm -hmm. And it's like, whoa, what do you mean change the video game of the today? And then you have to see it. So I got to see a very early prototype of Oculus Rift mm -hmm. for the first time. Um, I'm very height phobic. So when I were, I'm in a tall building, I get really scared. Um, and the, the, the demo he showed me, I was actually flying inside of the big, giant, gigantic circus curtain. And when I looked down, I felt like I was flying up above wow. high. Okay. And I, just, I, know, I don't feel that way mm -hmm. if you watch it you know, from a normal screen. Right. But when you watch you know, the virtual reality, mm -hmm. I felt like I was flying up there. I felt scared. And I thought, you know, um, I don't know what's going to happen with this, but if I can actually make this to um, public and see what the world can do with this, I think it will be exciting. It's going to be very cool, yeah. what you thought. Yeah, right. that's, that's, that was the only reason. I thought it's going to be a very, very cool idea to show off to the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, through the startup and following acquisition, you earned stable success, but you somehow declined your position and headed for new challenge, new startup. Let's talk about this after this short video clip. Seo dong the co-founder of Oculus, created a new change and innovation in the world of virtual reality. It was quite sensational back in 2014 when Facebook acquired Oculus VR, the manufacturer of Oculus Rift. Oculus VR led a drastic change in VR with Head Mountain Displays or HMD, which are armed with exceptional technicalities and groundbreaking prices. Back then, Seo dong received interest as he was a sole Korean out of the eight people who founded Oculus VR. Soon, he became the career business manager of Facebook Oculus. But a year later, he gave up the high-paying stable position. He decided to start up a new VR game company. 
stable job can only um, bring you a certain level of income. And um, if it's, there, I don't think there's any job out there that's stable and gives you a high paying job. If I want to live my life, I would rather live a life that actually helps me to achieve my dream and be able to make a lot of money. We applaud Sodong's passion as he strives to fulfill his dreams instead of taking the typical path demanded by society. So, in virtual reality, you don't have to be human as well. Well, perhaps you were asked this question a number of times. You were offered a very stable position with high compensation, but you chose the road less trodden and you decide to make your own company. And what was wrong with this stable position and high salary? I don't think you know, there's anything wrong with it. Um, it's a very um, compelling job. I mean, working for uh, Facebook is one of the probably biggest dreams that many people have. And I was fortunate enough to work for uh, Facebook for a while. Um, the reason I left the company, though, is because I wanted to try um, something that really excites me. Mm -hmm. Not that the work I had Facebook wasn't exciting, but something more exciting that I could control. Um, and I believe that virtual reality um, is an interesting industry that I could try another attempt. So I've decided to create a content company, mm -hmm. um, virtual reality content company. At the end of the day, many consumers will buy the virtual reality HMD when there's something they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, people are not going to open their wallets because there's a device. Um, for example, um, I'm a big Street Fighter V fan. Mm -hmm. a, there's a game called Street Fighter V, mm -hmm. and that game is only available for PlayStation 4. So I bought PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. and there's another um, big game I like to play. It's called uh, Gears of War. And that's only available for a system called Xbox One. Mm -hmm. So I bought Xbox One. Mm -hmm. So you get it? So many people will buy the virtual reality HMD if and only if um, there's content they want to try out. Right. So mm -hmm. I thought when the market is starting to open up, there will be a tremendous opportunity for content creation companies mm -hmm. to uh, create very interesting content. Mm -hmm. And hence, I left the company and decided to uh, create my own company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, your such thoughts and your philosophy is, is well reflected in your recently published book. The title is, That is Not My Life, right? Right, That is Not My Life. And from the title, I could guess that that book contains your journey to, to find your life instead of someone else's. And could you tell us more about what's inside your book? Sure. Um, the reason I decided to write this book is to um, deliver a message to young people. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to give young people to um, believe that you can achieve mm -hmm. what you can achieve mm -hmm. when you have a dream mm -hmm. and you set a goal. And I think that's the main, major message I want to deliver from the book. Working for Google, working for Facebook, working for Samsung, working for LG could be a, one way of living a life. As long as the, what you're doing in the com company is one, what you want to do. But if you're not doing something that you are always dreamed of, I think you should find something else. Right. Well, so to stay true to you, what you said, you challenged yourself to new startup and built your own company called mm -hmm. Volley. Mm -hmm. What was your vision statement? Um, my vision statement for the Volley Creative is to um, make people less lonely and create a better world. That's um, really nice. Yeah, the reason I mm. wanted to do that is because um, we, we, I see a problem in the society that many people are communicating through the uh, social network services mm -hmm. and not having actual human encounter. Right. And that's the trend that we cannot actually um, discard. Mm. And I believe that in the future, um, there will be more isolation from people to people. Right. And I wanted to create a solution with the virtual, virtual reality and, and um, artificial intelligence to allow people to interact with someone that's always available 24-7. Because, um, you know, I, I travel often um, throughout the world giving speeches or doing business meetings, but whenever I'm in the hotel, I feel lonely. You know, I, I want to talk to someone, but yet there's nobody to talk to. So I kind of thought that it would be cool to talk to a virtual reality friend mm -hmm. who has an artificial intelligence behind it. Mm -hmm. And with that idea, um, I think we can solve the problem with the elderly, elderly people right. who are more and more isolated and lonely. And by providing the solution to the 
loneliness, you can actually um, resolve a lot of the social problems caused by it. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it will actually eventually create a better world. Well, did you have any difficulties in establishing the firm? Of course, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think the single most difficult part is finding the right people. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. right members mm -hmm. for the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still struggling and looking mm -hmm. for good people. So you like playing games, right? Yes. And as a game lover, do you think the game industry will move toward virtual reality after mobile industry? Um, I think the, the question is to be rephrased. Mm -hmm. I think virtual reality will expand another uh, video gaming industry. Mm -hmm. um, right now, uh, gaming industry um, has been in categorized to three. Mm -hmm. um, personal computer gaming mm -hmm. um, and mobile device gaming right. and also household console gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, virtual reality will only um, expand to another um, experience mm -hmm. uh, and allow people to experience impossible. Um, and it's not something that is going to cannibalize the existing um, part, but I think it's also going to expand. Well, at this point, our viewers will be very curious about the changes that virtual reality will bring to game industry. We'll continue after taking a look at this short video clip. Last year, Seo dong -il founded Bolle Creative, a startup company which creates VR game contents and has begun a new challenge in the market. Prior to next year's release, he's holding meetings every day, and through various demonstrations, he's getting ready to go out into the market. ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ、ぜひ
They get to ask you questions? They get to ask you questions. Oh, really? Um, video game actually is designed to give you mission and rewards. So if I can design artificial intelligence to give interesting questions to ask to their audience, mm -hmm. we are bound to answer mm -hmm. those questions. Mm -hmm. And by uh, answering the questions, AI will start to learn your personal preferences and personal habits and personal interests. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to allow us to identify um, what personal needs are and that, will, that will help us to um, actually recommend or even personalize a lot of services that we provide today. Some of our viewers might have doubts or even worries about the kind of effect that virtual reality will have on human beings. For instance, they will, might pose a very important question of human isolation, for instance, you know, that, that you shut yourself off from the world around you. Mm -hmm. And also there's a question about the um, disorientation and mm -hmm. nausea or eye strains and all sorts of things. How would you persuade those viewers not to worry? Um, I would say um, isolation is, is really um, depending on how you want to define iso what is isolation is. Mm -hmm. um, of course, wearing something you know, big over your face and then seeing something alone seems like you're isolated. But at the same time, you can interact with somebody else from different parts of the world mm -hmm. in that virtual space. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at social network service, I think it allowed us to link with people that we, know, we don't know today. Or you know, it allowed us to connect with people that we have, haven't been able to connect. You know, my friends in the United States, my friends in Japan, my friends in China, or my friends all over the world are now connected through uh, something called social network service. Right. Um, Facebook is trying to use virtual reality to mm -hmm. their social network service. Mm -hmm. So I think in the future, what we are going to be able to do is we're going to actually live in the picture together. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, if I take a photo of London um, and looking at the uh, London Eye, I can say, hey, take a look at that place. And then we are in the same, the same picture. And then you know, pointing something and living together is a very, very powerful experience that mm -hmm. is not achievable with the current technology. So virtual reality is, is going to actually allow us to um, meet in a different time, in different, different spaces, um, that were not possible before. I, think it's, I don't think it's an isolation. It's more of an expansion, expansion of the relationships. Of the, yeah, relationships. You mean that you can relate with the real people exactly. in the virtual reality, right? Yeah. Or, um, I don't know if that's going to be the reality or not, but if you have somehow um, a way to recreate person that you have lost, oh. your family members, right. you know, um, and create the virtual reality of herself mm -hmm. or of himself, and then be able to just, you know, interact with him or, you know, seeing him in that virtual space gives you also a special feeling. Right. And that's not achievable with the current technology. Right. Uh, only virtual reality can deliver that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think isolation isn't really the problem. And, but the, the second problem you were saying about nauseation or, or uh, um, disorientation, dizziness, disorientation um, that is something that people are worried about with the virtual reality, um, but that really depends on the content design. Hmm. There's, there's other interesting virtual reality experiences where it doesn't create any nauseation or any disorientation. Also, that has to do with the level of the resolution that you talked about? Um, resolution is a part, and also um, the, uh, the, the, the disorientation is caused by the motion you perceive and your inner ear, ear is not reacting right. to it. Um, you know, people get car sick, People get boat sick, right. people get air sick. That's all caused by the motion that's not matched with mm -hmm, your inner ear. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are prone to that experience, if your body is, is made to react to that uncertain um, emotion of sickness, I think virtual reality um, can also cause that. But that doesn't mean that virtual reality is going to be a um, bad experience for everyone. Um, because I don't get car sick, I don't get boat sick, right. I only get a pleasurable experience from virtual reality. Um, and to, as a matter of fact, um, if you look at gaming experience, um, I believe last time I read an article, good 15% of gamers are not able to play first-person shooting games. And yet, com most commercially successful games are first-person shooting games. Mm -hmm. So um, just because 
virtual reality can cause disorientation doesn't mean that it's not going to be commercially successful. Okay. Well, you said that your dream was to comfort loneliness through the combination of artificial intelligence and virtual reality. Mm -hmm. Would there be any personal reason behind? Um, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> I do. Um, um, I was fortunate enough to go to Canada um, to study right. from my junior high school to university. Um, but living in a foreign country without friends mm. the first um, year or so was very tough. Right. And also, um, when you're traveling often for business, mm -hmm. um, you are away from your family for an extended of time. Right. And you feel lonely when you get to the right. hotel. Um, and also, I saw my grandparents um, who lived in Canada mm -hmm. <clears throat> at the time. Although she was surrounded by um, her family, mm -hmm. um, whenever she goes home, she mm -hmm. has to stay by herself. Mm. And we see a lot of Japanese um, civil generation people, people mm. um, dying lonely right. and not being able to talk to anyone. And that's causing a lot of the social problems. Mm. So with, with my personal experience and with the, uh, the current um, social problem, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, creating a solution um, that can sort of um, help people to feel less lonely mm -hmm. can cause, make the, uh, can make the world a, a better a place better to place live. A better place to live. Yeah. Mm, I see. My, I, may, I may sound crazy, but, <laughs> you know, we're trying. Okay. Well, besides games, how do you see the uh, potential of VR in the other fields? Sure. Um, there's a, there are many interesting stories. Um, there's one time that there was an old grandmother who was over 90 years old, tried Oculus Rift for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and she had a really, really um, blast experience with it. Um, when you're traveling, we require uh, three major conditions. We need to have time, we have money, and you have to be healthy to travel. Um, if you're a 90 years old grandmother, out of the three conditions, what conditions do you think you're gonna have? It's probably time, right? right? Um, Money-wise, I'm not sure how many um, old grandmothers are rich enough to, to travel. Um, and health-wise, you know, um, she might be healthy enough, but you know, also longer period of flying can cause some health issues. I remember my grandmother who passed away um, last year, and she was 86, but when she was trying to come to Korea at age of 83, um, when I bought the ticket for her, uh, the, the travel agency said she needs the doctor's note to make sure that she's okay to travel. Right, sure. So mm -hmm. um, for tour industry, um, if she's 90 years old, it's impossible for her to travel. Mm -hmm. But with virtual reality, that actually makes you to believe that you're mm -hmm. in that place, mm -hmm. then you're going to be um, solving the time issues and health issues right. and also money issues. So that's one example. Mm -hmm. And we have something called the Korean wave. Korean so we have wave. a lot of um, you know, Japanese fans or Chinese fans or any you know, Southeast Asian fans coming to Korea to watch their favorite right. Korean stars. Mm -hmm. um, that takes a lot of money to travel and it takes a lot of time to come. But with the virtual reality technology, you can watch your favorite um, artist show mm. from home, and, but you feel like you're actually there. Even for the sports event, you know, I'm a big fan of Manchester United. Um, and remember watching all those games that are playing. But if you are a Manchester United um, team owner and wants to sell your VIP seat of the stadium mm. to the world, normally you only have the number of seats available to sell. But with a virtual reality, you as can you expand get, to right, limitless times. It's a limitless um, <laughs> seat. Right. And, and, the, and the team owner can say, we are selling 50% off if you're buying the virtual reality version of our VIP seats. Wow. Then number of seats that you can sell is wow. tremendous. Mm -hmm. It actually lifts the physical limitation. Mm -hmm. So virtual reality is a technology that actually allows us to control time and space. Mm -hmm. So by having that power, we can retranslate or recreate the um, traditional industry we, we know today. Well, you said that uh, virtual reality headsets are now available, and mm -hmm. are they expensive? Right now, the, the price range is, is actually, um, it varies. You can buy your favorite high-end virtual reality headset anywhere from $599 mm -hmm. US up to uh, $799. Mm -hmm. Or you can buy a very cheap one that's 
around $10 to $20. Do you think that, it, what do you think it will take to more popularize it? I think the content. The content. Um, right. Okay. Um, Many people that buy their cell phones or smartphones today, which cost anywhere from $700 to $900. Right. And they change it every year or two years. So um, the money is not the problem. Though, money right? isn't the problem. Okay. People buy mobile phones because they think it's, it's that. It's worth it. It's worth right? it. Right. Yeah. So, but in order to say the same thing for virtual reality mm -hmm. headset, you have to prove that there's enough content for right. people to actually justify the cost. Mm -hmm. So um, I think at the end of the day, content will actually speak for, for itself. Mm -hmm. Do you think VR will change our daily life? Um, I think it's got a great potential to it. Um, in today's world, we spend a lot of time commuting. Uh, we spend a lot of money on um, gas and traveling, and also um, we also spend a lot of time being in a different place, workplace. And because the world is becoming more globalized, we require a lot of traveling too. Um, virtual reality is, a, as I said before, is a power to um, control the time and space. So what if you can wear your virtual reality goggle in the morning and then be in the uh, meeting in New York? You don't have to travel mm -hmm. and you don't have to wash yourself. You don't have to have your nice hair day. The virtual reality avatar of yourself will be there with a very nice, needy clothes. All you need to be is this, all you need to do is to wear the headset and then be in the meeting. Um, also, you know, even the daily routine um, shopping. Um, when you are shopping, you have to go down to the shopping mall or even local uh, mart to shop something. But th th that's because you want to go and check out the real product. But with the virtual reality um, that allows you to shop anywhere you want and anything you want, and you don't have to travel one place to another to buy something, then I think it's going to change a lot of the shopping behavior too. So what is your forecast of how long it will take? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say around five years. Oh, really? Yeah. That short? Yeah. Um, mm. A lot of experts say the virtual reality is going to really take off in the year 2020. Um, the reason we are saying it because that's when the world is going to start adopt 5G connection. Mm. Um, the global 5G connection will be available starting from year 2020. So with the faster network mm -hmm. and better um, hardware and more content available for people to try, I think then we are going to have a big um, influence of virtual reality in our daily lives. Mm. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it only took nine years for smartphones right. to be, yeah. you know, important device yeah. for us. Well, you are an avid supporter for young people by investing to their startups. Is that because you see much hope in them? Um, I certainly do. Mm. Um, I think it's important for us to support young people's dream. Mm -hmm. um, Korean industry um, had a tremendous growth mm -hmm. by copying the idea mm -hmm. of the Western world. Mm -hmm. It's called the catching up effect. Right. But now we are living in a time period where um, we need to innovate. We need to be creative. Right. Um, and we cannot just rely on old manufacturing anymore because our comp competitiveness um, in this field is starting to um, become less and less competitive mm -hmm. or less appealing. Mm -hmm. um, so for us to move forward, um, we need to support new ideas, new concepts. And they can only come from young people um, with creative minds. So I decided to use small of my small fortune of mine to invest into those startups to support their ideas and make them into reality. Well, this is the last question, an official question of the interview. And among our viewers, there might be some young ones like who are the same path as you are or anyone who is challenging themselves to new, new things. Would you like to give them a words of wisdom? Um, sure. Um, I'm not sure if I'm the right person to say, but one thing I like to tell to young people is that don't give up and you know, do try before you think too much because nothing actually happens as you plan. Mm. Um, when you actually make actions mm -hmm. and as you adopt the new changes, mm -hmm. new solutions are going to show up mm -hmm. and you cannot have a perfect plan. So go and try and make your dream and true. And just do it. Yeah, just right. do it. <laughs> well, um, it's already time for us to wrap up the interview. And in the beginning of the interview, I thought that we'll be talking about computers and technologies and business, but we ended up talking about more about dreams and challenges and hope. And 
That was wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your time and for sharing your dream with us. Well, thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank you.